it's M. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'll be talking about the things that I use for online classes. Not as a student, but as a teacher. Yes, you heard me right, as a teacher. As some of you may or may not have known, I am actually a senior high school teacher teaching physics and calculus to my grade 12 and grade 11 students. Teaching these subjects during pandemic is actually extra challenging. In fact, even during face-to-face -face classes, teaching these subjects or making the students appreciate these subjects is already very hard in itself. That is why this video is about me sharing the gadgets or peripherals that I use as well as the apps or websites that I think are useful, interactive, and makes learning fun even during in an online class setup. So this video might be helpful to all teachers out there who are just starting off or who are still getting used to the whole online class setup. So without further ado, I think it's time for us to get into the video. So first and foremost, the most basic equipment that we need for our online classes is our laptop. This is my HP Pavilion laptop. So it has been with me for three years. No, I mean four years through thick and thin. So this has been with me during my thesis days in college and this has been through a lot. I actually already replaced some of its specs. I have replaced its RAM, its um, solid state drive. It, it used to be the HDD but now it's in SSD so that it runs more smoother more smoother smoother <laughs> it's not really necessary for you to upgrade to those specs but if you want to have a better workflow on things then you might want to consider like any other laptops my laptop already has a built-in webcam and also a speaker but i personally think that the quality of those peripherals are not that you know of a good quality that's why i opted to invest in a better one so i bought this webcam off of shopee i'm just gonna put the price somewhere here because i really didn't uh i forgot the price of these stuff and also i'm gonna be putting down the links below if ever you want to purchase them as well so i have this ocn yeah ocn 2k webcam and it has a very nice quality to it it is also wide angle so the space isn't limited with this kind of webcam also it's not grainy it doesn't have a grainy quality unlike my built-in webcam to my laptop so i really like that one also it's usb plug and play so you don't need any kind of adapter all you have to do is to plug it to your usb and then voila it will immediately work as a webcam so another tip is that you have to make sure that your background is clear of any of anything because you know sometimes you just have to clear out the things that are very cluttered all over your background because it might get really distracting to your students so in my case if i have a backdrop like this i think i personally think that it's okay because everything is neat it's well organized unlike if you have a backdrop where you know a lot of books are scattered in your bookshelves and then you might have some of your laundry that you haven't uh, folded yet so you might consider folding them and then putting them away so that it won't distract your students next up is we have a microphone this one is a condenser microphone that is also bought off from Lazada I'm also gonna insert the price here however this microphone over here doesn't really do its job I mean I I got what I paid for because this one is a cheap microphone. The downside of this one is that it has a hissing sound which really annoys me. So I might just use this one as a prop. But if ever you have the means to buy a good quality microphone, then go for it. It's actually a really good investment because as I said, it's better for you to have bad video quality than having bad audio quality. So you need to make sure that while you're doing your online class your 
uh, vicinity is quiet everything is silent because as i said your students will easily get distracted to any noise that is not related to your topic next up is that we also need earphones although this kind of earphones will already suffice but there are certain situations wherein you can't really avoid that there will be some external voice around your surroundings so you might want to consider getting one that filters out the background noise so in that case i have my trusty airpods pro over here you know if i try to do online classes here in our house as i said there will be a lot of background noise especially during the day so i had to use the noise cancelling uh effect on this one so that it will filter out the background noise and if i hear some background noise during my classes i also get easily distracted i I instantly lose my train of thought so it's not just for the students sake but also for your sake as the teacher lastly is my most important peripheral of them all I have my graphic tablet and my stylus pen so they actually come together in a set we all know that boards have played an important role in classrooms it's an essential part of every classroom a board is there for us to use to show our solutions, to sketch some graphs, and to emphasize certain points in our topic. So without a board, it will be hard for the students to really grasp what you're trying to talk about. So that is why graphic tablets like this is a good substitute for boards. You can also use this if you're an aspiring graphic artist, you know, an illustrator, or if you want to design something for your class you want to stand out and use your own materials use your own graphics then you can by all means use this graphic tablet to sketch and illustrate your materials so i also have some special mentions there are three of them these peripherals are i think useful but not really necessary for you to have so first off is a ring light it would be nice to have a setup wherein everything is well lighted then another one is an external fan so one of the problems that i have encountered with my laptop is that it heats up really easily so because of that i invested in an external fan next special mention is external usb ports so you will have to attach a lot of peripherals in your laptop or computer so most laptops just have three or two to three usb ports so it will not be enough if you have a lot of peripherals that you will use it's not really necessary for you to purchase all of these peripherals as long as you have a laptop a working laptop and an internet connection then you're actually good to go However, if you teach subjects like mine, wherein you have to show a lot of solutions, sketch some graphs, then you might really want to consider buying a graphic tablet and a stylus. So other than that, there really is no reason for you to purchase everything that I said in the peripherals portion. So I just did that because I'm extra. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I just want the best for my students. That is why I'm willing to go an extra mile. I'm willing to invest anything so that my students will learn and have the best learning experience from me. So yeah, that's it for the peripherals portion. Commercial break! This video is sponsored by White Flower. If you're like me as being a granny at such a young age, then this is perfect for you. White flower, buy now! No, just kidding. I'm not sponsored yet. <laughs> I'm such a granny. I've been carrying around this white flower. I just realized I had it in my pocket. <laughs> Now let's move on to the apps that I use. So there are four apps that I use to deliver my online classes. Okay, so first off is this app called OpenBoard. 
So it's an app that reflects whatever you're writing to your graphic tablet to your screen. So it's kind of like the one that Khan Academy uses, but I don't think it's the exact same app that they use. But basically it looks something like this. You have the option of choosing your own paper. They have some grids. They have some lines. They also have the kind of paper wherein you can choose between black and white or dotted. So I really like that option from them. And it also has some features that enables the user to sketch graphs easily. However, the, the con of this application is that they don't have some shape tools. I mean, they do have a line tool, but the variation is not wide. There is no circle tool, there is no rectangle tool, so you have to freehand everything. And for someone like me who isn't really good at drawing, then showing my sketches to my students might be a little hard because everything is all rough around the edges. <laughs> so yeah. The second one is obviously Google Meet. I know a lot of schools and institutions are actually using Zoom as their video conferencing app, but for us in our department, we're lucky that we kind of have a partnership with Google. That is why we're able to use Google Meet as long as we could. Before, I think it has an unlimited time, but I think Google already restricted the number of hours the duration of your calls to 60 minutes only and if you go if you want to go further beyond that then i guess you need to pay for the premium at least that's what i know you might want to correct me on this one so if you know anything about this then you might want to comment down below and correct me on this one but that's what i know so for us who has an email address that is connected to google then we are allowed to extend to that 60 minute free period so we can have unlimited chit chats all we want but one con is that it might be a hassle to switch between two apps so what i did before is that i opened google meet in my laptop then i also opened it in my cell phone so that i can use two apps simultaneously i personally think that is one downside of it I think it's not only for Google Meet. I don't know, but I think it's also for Zoom. I'm not really well versed with Zoom anyway, so yeah, somebody correct me on this one. In order to address this problem, here comes the third app. So the third app is called OBS Studios. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster System Studios. So it is a free and open source software I'm just gonna read the definition here. A free and open source software that enables the user to record videos and live stream. So this has been widely used by a lot of gamers out there. So I integrate the OBS studios to my Google Meet via virtual camera. And if I do that, then whatever is the layout in my OBS studio will reflect directly to my Google Meet. So in there, in OBS Studio, I can just transition from one app to another, from one layout to another. And it is very useful if you are about to show to your students various apps simultaneously or, you know, if you want to show your students a lot of apps during your discussion. Then I have a special mention. This special mention is actually more geared towards making video lessons rather than having live online classes. And this is Adobe Premiere Pro. And this one is the one that I use whenever I edit my video lessons. And it's also the editor that I use whenever I try to edit my YouTube videos. However, this is not really recommended for me, especially if you're just a beginner because uh it's very hard <laughs> you need you really need to study how to navigate you have to study all those panels there are a lot of alternatives out there this from filmora it's really easy filmora kinemaster but since this is a video on what i use in my online classes so <laughs> i put adobe premiere pro 
Anyway, those are the apps that I use. Lastly, we are going to be talking about the websites that I use. I have three websites over here that I personally think are very useful to make your online classes interactive and fun. So first off is Quizzes. It's an online platform that enables the teachers to interact with their students in a very creative manner. So you can create your quiz over there and it's really fun because whenever you assign a quiz to your students and then they play it live, they also insert some memes in between the questions which is really fun and they also add some power-ups so that your students can become competitive in a way and it's really fun the interface is really cute as well it really entices the visual aspect of your students i really like it and it's free yeah i think it's free <laughs> it's a really great way to bring your class together there was also this one time that i use it you know we just want to chill we just want to play games so i searched for a pre-made game over there and we played it together next is we have fat simulations so as someone who is teaching physics and calculus simulations are really important to show to the students since we don't have laboratory activities then fat simulations can work as a substitute fat simulations have kind of like a little prototype some simulations on what laboratory experiments should look like so you will have to alter some parameters and then observe observe how those parameters affect certain variables and stuff like that so from there the students will be able to draw some conclusions as to the relationship from one variable to another even without doing an experiment that's one of the reasons why FET simulations are very useful for online classes for distance learning in general the third one is GeoGebra it's mostly for showing graphs for certain functions so I use this one for mainly for my calculus classes an example for this one is that I used GeoGebra when I was discussing the concept on conic sections so say for example you are given an equation of a hyperbola I can't say the word hyperbola. hyperbola hyperbola okay so for example you're given the equation of a hyperbola then you can just input it directly in GeoGebra and then GeoGebra will do the work for you after inputting it then voila GeoGebra now has a hyperbola for you <laughs> and that's it for this video thank you so much for watching i hope this video motivates you to be more creative and innovative in creating your online classes so let's do everything that we can to the best of our capabilities to bridge the gap between us teachers and learners just so that we will be able to deliver the kind of education that our students deserve even during the predicament that we are in although i admit that i sometimes become unmotivated because i prefer face-to-face -face classes so again that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed this whole shenanigan that i've been doing and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to click like to this video and subscribe so that you won't miss out on every upload that i make anyway thank you so much for watching once again bye and see you next video god bless